My name's Tobias Fay, and this is my boat SeaQuest. In three months' time, I'll be sailing out of Hobart in an attempt to become the fastest Australian in history to circumnavigate the world. I grew up in Dodgers Ferry, a small town just on the southeast side of the Tasmania. I've always had dinghies as a kid that Dad and myself restored. That, yeah, the cost of having a 50-foot boat is yeah pretty horrendous. Um, like I said, I basically knew I was never going to be able to afford this boat, so I uh, mortgaged the house to the Absolute Hills to buy it. So since then it's been pretty financially crippling, but um, the way I look at it, it's a matter of making sure I'm working yeah, my butt off basically to stay afloat. For me, a life dream is real. It's, yeah, it's, it's far more important to pursue a dream than to pursue money in life, I think. It's, um, it comes to a point in your life where you're going to leave this world and I think if you can achieve the things that you want to do in life then you'll yeah, die a happy man. So at the moment I've got Sequest pulled to absolute pieces. Basically we need to rebuild the entire boat, checking every fitting, resealing every fitting, new standing rigging, just going over everything to make sure I don't have any problems at sea. This is where I'll be sleeping and navigating Sequest throughout the trip. Uh, just built this chart table in the last few weeks. It basically consists of a bulkhead here and here and um, an area to keep my laptops and charts and navigational tools. On, in front of me, I'll have two auto helm controls, a chart plotter, um, a wind instrument, and then a, a relay instrument to basically bring up my headings um, and any other information that I need for the trip. Um, the reason I've built this chart table is because I need somewhere to be able to sleep comfortably as well as navigate the boat when I'm not up on deck. So this will hopefully, if it all works to plan, we'll have a seat here that folds down into a bed. And um, over night time when I'm laying down, I can basically just gaze up and see what headings the boat are doing. And yeah, just change the course if I need to by a couple of degrees. So. Um, it's just a matter of being able to sit here comfortably and yeah, and, and get a bit of sleep and still be able to control the boat. What you can see around us right now is more work in progress. Yesterday we dropped the mast out of the boat, so that's why you don't see any rigging or um, a boom or any sails at the moment. Right here is where I'll be helming the boat for most of the trip. Um, and obviously in the cockpit here, I can control pretty much everything I need to with the boat. The only things I need to go forward for is hoisting spinnakers or storm jibs. But it's a really um, a good great area to work. Everything tails back to the cockpit, so I have all my lines running back so I can reef the boat from where I'm standing, uh, which prevents me from going forward to having to worry about getting swept overboard or anything like that. Um, straight in the hatch just here, you, um, have a complete sealed off section which has all my steering gear for the boat and that contains two independent auto helms so basically I have a double redundancy system with that so if anything goes wrong with the auto helm that's in action I can switch that off and then move on to the next one. Uh, so right now you can see a massive hole in the deck this is where the mast once was it's now yeah gone as I said so all these sheaves here is basically where all the halyards run down um, onto the deck and then tail back to the cockpit. Yesterday when I pulled the mast out there was a heap of wires that got con caught up inside the mast and while it was suspended in the air with the crane I had to reach up inside the mast and pull the wires out and it was really horrible. Um, Dad and me both looked at each other and we just knew if the strop on the crane had broken I would have lost my arm instantly so it was pretty full on getting that out yesterday. <laughs> 